We've been, we've really understand how to, you know, uh, when a certain gas is evolving, you and I, at the moment, know that when carbon dioxide evolves, it, either this or this is the anion that is present in the world, in the unknown salts. All right. Then how do we conclude, all right, or what do we observe to know that, oh, this gas that is coming out is carbon four oxide. Oh, this gas that is coming out is nitrogen four oxide. First and foremost, there are some physical things you are going to, you may see or may not see. And I'm going to talk about that first. You see, in qualitative analysis, at this level, at secondary high school level, we have just 12 gases. We have just 12 gases. We have three uh, neutral gases, one basic gas, and eight acidic gases. These are acidic gases. And that's why we call them acid radical in the first place, all right? These are acidic gases. What that simply means is that whenever they are evolving, the gas is coming out of the test tube. The gas is coming out of the test tube, and you place a, li a wet litmus paper close to the gas that is coming out. If the blue litmus paper, if it is a blue litmus paper, if it changes to red, then definitely it is one of these gases. It is an acidic gas. Each one of them will turn a wet blue litmus paper to red, number one. Number two, all right? Number two is that only this, carbon four oxide, carbon four oxide is colorless, colorless and odorless. Like we have said, that the, uh, the what, the, um, the, 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 the gas that we are breathing out is carbon four oxide, all right? You know it is colorless and odorless, all right? So then, however, to confirm that the gas that is coming out is carbon four oxide, apart from the preliminary test, there is also confirmatory test. To confirm if it is carbon four oxide, there's a delivery tube that you pass from the test tube into lime water. If the lime water turns milky and it extinguishes fire, then it is carbon four oxide. Colorless and odorless gas, which turns Tons blue litmus paper red and tons lime water milky. This is what you have under observation. You have a different, I mean, from the uh, inference, you have this or this is present. So if it is a colorless and odorless gas that turns blue with most paper red. In fact, I won't be repeating this point. I won't be repeating this point because each one of them will turn uh, moist blue litmus paper red. Are we there? So I won't be repeating that. Now, if it is hydrogen sulfide, there is a characteristic odor for hydrogen sulfide. The characteristic odor is simply that it has a rotten egg smell. It has a rotten egg smell. You can do it in your lab. Just get ion two sulfide <coughs> and dilute hydrochloric acid. React it together. You are going to get the evolution of effervescence of hydrogen sulfide. First thing you notice, of course, the gas is colorless. Of course, the gas is colorless. In fact, from here, okay, let me change this order. Let me change this order. Let me put. Uh, SO2 here, then NO2 here, all right? So I'm going to have NO3 minus SO3, uh, 2 minus, S2O3, 2 minus, and SO4, 2 minus. These guys here are all colorless and, uh, uh, no, they are not colorless, but they are all colorless. They are all colorless. They are all colorless. These guys here are all colorless, all right? But the odor of this hydrogen sulfide is rotten egg smell. That is what you are going to observe first. 
Then to confirm if it is hydrogen sulfide, what do you do? You look for a filter paper, all right? Wet the filter paper with lead ethanoids. Lead two ethanoids. Lead two ethanoids, all right? Lead two nitrates or lead two uh, ethanoids. Are we there? Are we there? Wet the liter filter paper with any of these guys. If the filter paper in contact with this gas turns black, all right, turns black, all right, turns black, turns what? Black, black, B. If it turns black, then it is confirming that the gas evolving is hydrogen sulfide. In essence, it is telling us that the uh, anion present is sulfide 2 ions. Under your observation, you will say effervescence or of colorless gas with a what? With a rotten egg smell, which turns uh, led to a, a, a moist filter paper. A paper that is moist with what? Led to a tannoid. It turns it to black, which means in the inference, sulfide 2 ion is present. All right. Then for this guy, I said they are all uh, colorless. But for this guy, it is having, in fact, here downward, they are all having pungent or irritating smell. They are all having what? Pungent or irritating smell. From nitrogen four oxide downward, they are all having pungent or irritating smell. All right? So, however, if you observe that the color is what? For NO2 gas, the color is what? Reddish, reddish brown. Characteristic color is what? Reddish brown. NO2 gas is reddish brown. All right? Of course, it is what? Uh, reddish brown, but the odor is what? The odor is pungent or irritating smell. And it turns blue litmus paper uh, red, being an acidic gas. To confirm, to confirm nitrogen 4 peroxide, to confirm nitrogen 4 peroxide, to confirm uh, nitrogen 4 oxide, what you have to do is just to introduce moist starch iodide paper into the gas and the paper turns blue black. All right? It turns a moist starch iodide paper to what? To blue black. This test is similar to the test of chlorine gas. Remember, the first uh, uh, two, they are colorless gas. But this guy here, in fact, the first three are colorless, all right? But this guy here is reddish brown, reddish brown. Now, chlorine, chlorine, chlorine. In fact, from this chlorine to uh, bromide ion to iodide ion, there is a mnemonic device for it that I call, for their color anyway, uh, the guy rubs, the guy rubs uh, a VIP. The guy rubs a VIP. The guy rubs a VIP. All right? All right? Uh, the guy rubs, or we should say, uh, RB guys rub a VIP. RB guys rub a VIP. All right? I mean, this is the rub. Rubbery. All right? RB guys rub a VIP. So RB for nitrogen gas, reddish brown. Uh, guys for chlorine gas, which is what? Greenish, greenish what? Yellow, greenish yellow. Rub uh, for bromine gas is also reddish, reddish what? Reddish brown. All right? Uh, iodine gas is, um, is either violet, violet or purple. Iodine gas is either violet or purple. So RB guys rub a VIP. RB is also reddish 
uh, reddish what? Reddish brown. All right. So for these guys, if you are having a reddish brown gas evolving, all right, and the reddish brown gas is turning a moist starch iodide paper into what? Blue black. Then the gas is nitrogen four uh, oxide, which is indicating uh, uh, triangle nitrate five ion. But if the gas is what greenish yellow, if the gas is a greenish yellow gas, it simply is going to be indicating. Of course, when the gas also turns uh, uh, more starch iodide paper into blue black, the gas is also what is also chlorine gas. For violet color, we are having uh, bromine gas. However, for hydrogen chloride gas, mm. if, I, if it is hydrogen chloride gas, it's um, basically uh, it's a colorless gas also, uh, but with a pungent odor, irritating odor, right? But to confirm it, that's deep uh, an iron rod into what? Into ammonia. Remember, this is acid. Ammonia is the only basic gas that we have. Deep an iron rod into ammonia and bring it in contact to the gas that is evolving, all right? If there is a formation of a white dense film, all right? If there is a formation of a white dense film, then know that the gas that is evolving is hydrogen chloride gas, which is in return indicating chlorine gas. So for today, we have been able to discuss how to identify anions using the evolution or effervescence of some gases, all right? And we've also seen how to identify the gases that evolve from eating a what? From eating an unknown substance.